we want to say greetings to everyone. Thank you all for joining us today, and we pray that uh, something will be said that will be a blessing to you. Amen. All right, so now uh, we want to re just real briefly read a comment that was left on uh, one of our videos by a young lady, and uh, which we believe is part of the reason why there's uh, some confusion uh, concerning uh, what we're teaching and concern well not what we're teaching but really uh, concerning what people teach and what we teach okay uh, so when I read this it'll be a little bit more clearer to you it says brother Bolden keeping the law for the sake of salvation is not true we can agree on that in other words she's saying I, I can agree with you on the fact that we should not keep the law for the sake of salvation. But she says, but what about keeping the law for the sake of not missing out on God's blessings? Isn't that the same as what we already know and even experienced in our own lives? Sin, and she puts in quotation, sin separates you from God or, quote, your prayers will be rendered ineffective or like your predecessor which told about people having their healing blocked by an unrepentant sin. She says, however, what you say, nobody can deny, which is keeping the Sabbath is their main thing, but there are other parts of Mosaic law which they don't keep. All right. And so the question uh, really arises from this. Go ahead and uh, mute that. The question really arises from this. What is the difference? In other words, not that, Hawk. The question really arises from this. Uh, the problem is that people tend to make the law of God and the law of Moses the same thing. Just go ahead and end that. People tend to make the law of Moses and the law of God the same thing. And of course, that's not God's will. That's, that's not what the word of God tells us the law of Moses and the law of God are two different things and um, that is something that the law want us to understand so with that let's go ahead and read let's, if you have your Bible let's go to the second chapter of the book of Romans again we're talking about keeping the law versus the keeping the law of Moses versus keeping the law of God and of course the Bible tells us to stand fast in the liberty wherewith we have been called you see that and so we're supposed to stand fast in the liberty of God in the liberty of Christ Jesus and so we're gonna read that and hopefully you all will get a better understanding of what the difference is so when we're saying we're no longer under the law we're not saying hey so you can go out and commit adultery you can go out and kill you can go out and steal of course we know that that was part of the Mosaic law. Don't kill, don't steal, and you know, commit adultery and things like that. But the difference is, there are some things in the Mosaic law that are not included in the law of God when God writes those things in our hearts. Why and what is it that's not included? Those things that had to do with ceremonial practices, like sacrifices and things like that. But there are some, like there are some parts of the law that we can't go to heaven and keep and, and, and I mean and break at the same time. In other words, um, you can get to heaven without offering sacrifices. I mean as far as lambs and goats. But God have already taken care of that. And so some there are some parts of the Mosaic law that God has taken care of for us, which is the main thing, him sending his son Jesus Christ to die for us. But then there are some things that we have to keep that God writes in our hearts. That's what the Bible means when it says that the letter killeth, but the spirit maketh alive. There are some things that's written in our hearts by the spirit of God that we're going to automatically keep when we give our lives to the Lord. And so we no longer have to have to pin the Ten Commandments on a wall somewhere to keep reminding us to keep those things or to keep them. If we don't have to write them down, if God have already written them in our hearts. In other words, when we get saved, God takes out that stony heart of flint, uh, uh, and puts in a fleshly heart. In other words, a soft heart. That he has written his laws into our hearts. And after he has done that, 
that's when we keep it. Now, if God have written a, his laws in your heart, isn't it only by nature you're going to keep those things that's written there? In other words, you have been programmed to keep those things. So let's keep reading here. Let's read uh, Romans chapter 2. We're going to jump around a little bit. Romans chapter 2, um, verse 24. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth you, profiteth if thou keepeth the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, in other words, those that are not law keepers, keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his circumcision be counted for circumcision? In other words, if you are keeping the law, in other words, the law that is written in your heart, doesn't that disqualify the law of Moses? In other words, doesn't that in itself do away with the law of Moses? Let's go and keep reading. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the latter and circumcision does transgress the law. In other words, the one who God have written the laws in their heart, their actions are going to judge the ones who's trying to keep the letter of the law, who break the law. Again, we have to keep saying this, that the law of Moses have never been kept perfectly. And so then God brought on something new. Now he writes that law in your heart. And if you will be led by the Spirit of God, you can keep God's law perfectly. That's what the Word of God means in the first chapter of John when it says that the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now you have to understand what, the, what he means when he said grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The truth of the matter is this, is that when you have given your life to the Lord, he places you and he programs you to keep his letter. Keep his law. That's what the Bible means when it says... If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In other words, a new creation. And notice, he's not, nobody can create themselves. So if you're in Christ, God creates you to perform the good works that he has called you to perform. And what Paul here is saying is, that new nature that's written, that's in the hearts of people, it will judge the people, you see that, who are trying to keep the letter of the law, which no man can keep to begin with. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of what? The heart. In the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. See, so that's the difference. When you give your life to the Lord, you're circumcised. That's male and female. In the Old Testament and in the Old Covenant, only males could be circumcised. In the New Covenant, male and female are circumcised. Not in their flesh, but circumcised of the heart. You see that? And it's important that we understand that. And look at what, let's read that again, verse 29. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit. You see that? In the heart and in the spirit, and not in the letter. So that's the difference. There's a difference between keeping the law, the letter of the law, which was given by Moses, and keeping the spirit of God, keeping the law of the spirit of God, which is written in our hearts. You see that? There's a difference there. All right, so now let's go. Um, let's go to verse, let's go to chapter 5. And we're going to start reading at verse 12. Now, we, we're just kind of jumping through here because we want you to get a general picture of uh, some of the things that the Lord want us to understand. Uh, chapter 5, verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Verse 13, For unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. In other words, the only people that are sinning are those that are actually under the law. That's why you always hear us preach that there is a such thing as being perfect. There is a such thing as living without sin. How do you live without sin? Your first step is coming from under the law. If there is no law, then there is no sin. 
In other words, when you pay attention to the law, when you're paying attention to touch not, taste not, that's when you're, you're living in sin. All right. Verse 13 again, for unto the law, sin was in, in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is, when there is no law. Verse 14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded to many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Let's keep reading. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. See that? And so by one man's disobedience we were made sinners. That means you didn't have to, you know, just be out committing adultery and doing all these things to be a sinner. You were born a sinner. Not, not by anything you've done. You take that newborn baby, that's the most innocent thing you'll see in this world. And that newborn baby that have just been birthed into this world is just as much a sinner as somebody that's out in the world, you know, living it up, living for the devil wholeheartedly. Now, it doesn't seem fair, but this Bible makes it clear. By one man, that's talking about Adam, sin was introduced into this world. And if that is the case, then shouldn't it be, isn't it just right that by one man, Jesus Christ, we will all been, have been made righteous? You see that? And so that's something, that idea is at the core of what you're talking about when you're saying when you're talking about law keeping law keepers are still under the transgression of Adam and have not accepted the free gift of Jesus Christ you were made a sinner and the law was brought in because of the transgression of Adam and if that is the case when Jesus Christ came which the Bible refers to as the last Adam that means all we have to do is accept look at what that says there for as by, in verse 19 of the fifth chapter of the book of Romans, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of how many? One. Not the obedience of everybody trying to keep the law, but by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now we have to catch that. If we miss that, then we'll miss the whole thing. Is In other words, law keepers, is not through your obedience that you are made righteous. It's by the obedience of Jesus Christ and your faith in him that makes you righteous. Your faith in the one who was able to be obedient. You see that? Verse 20. Let's read that. Let's read verse 20. It says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. In other words, the law entered to magnify and to, to show you the offense, but look at what it says. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Now you have to get that. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Now that right there is the whole key to justification. You are not justified by the law. You're not justified by works. You are justified by faith. Faith in who? Jesus Christ, the only one that was able to be obedient up until that time. <clears throat> you see that? Your righteousness comes by faith in Jesus Christ, not by keeping the law. If you're trying to keep the law for righteousness sake, 
then you are still a sinner. And you have done spite unto the grace of God. Unto the spirit of the grace of God. You see that? And that's something that God wants you to understand. Wouldn't it be a sad thing if somebody is in prison and they get bailed out, you go up there and you pay the money to get them out of prison and they refuse it saying, well, no, I'll just pay for myself and don't have the money to do it but st and will choose to remain in prison over accepting what you've done for them freely. We would call that person crazy. And so much more so even today that we were all prisoners that Jesus Christ came and posted bail for us so that we would not have to be law keepers and try to, you know, free ourselves because it was impossible. It is impossible for a prisoner to free themselves. Even if they break out of a natural jail, they still bound because they are constantly looking over their soul shoulder. And eventually we'll get caught. You see that? And so isn't it a shame that somebody have already come and paid the price and have already made us righteousness, his righteousness through faith in him, but yet we will reject it? Which the bottom line is because we want a glory in flesh. If you were made a sinner by the sin and the transgression of one man, which was Adam, isn't it only righteous? Isn't it only just that by another man you would be made the righteousness of God through faith if you were labeled a sinner before you were even conscious or aware of your very existence isn't only isn't it only right that God provide a means through his son Jesus Christ that you are made the righteousness by the obedience of that son and now after you've accepted that, Jesus, the Lord himself, writes his laws, his commandments in your heart. And you do them by nature, by your new nature. We always talk about it. And we'll get into that the next time, if the Lord will. Our old nature versus our new nature. If you are still struggling with sin, it's because you're still, you still have your old nature. But you, if you are living victorious over sin... It is because God's Holy Spirit have come to live on the inside of you and you have become a new creature. That new creature don't struggle with sin. It's impossible for that new creature to struggle with sin. Why? Because the law of God have been written in your hearts and that is what you follow. And we'll get in that the next time. Amen. I pray that people will really take heed to this message. Some of you that are listening in, you may be struggling with sin. And the reason why you're struggling with sin is because you have not submitted yourself unto the righteousness of God, which is by faith. You don't need prayer that you stop fornicating or that you stop committing adultery or that you stop doing this. You just need the new nature of God on the living on the inside of you that helps you to overcome sin. God's not struggling with sin. And if his nature is living on the inside of you, you're not going to struggle with it either. The Bible says we are tempted by sin when we are led away of our own lust. It's your lust that's causing you to be tempted. But if God is living on the inside of you, you don't have lust on the inside of you. Because God's not, his, he, his spirit won't dwell in an unclean temple. And so that's, that's your key there. You see that? And if you call yourself a law keeper, you know, and many of us, many people, uh, they know what things they're struggling with. They know what things that are not pleasing to God. You need to ask God to come and live on the inside of you. That's just really the bottom line. You need to ask God to come and live on the inside of you. And I'm telling you, that struggle will be over with. You will no longer have that struggle. I don't care how long you've been going to church. That doesn't matter. What matters is God living on the inside of you and you being led by the Spirit of God. Because God won't lead you into temptation. He won't lead you into sin. And that power of God is more stronger than the power of Satan that had dominion over you at one time. 
You see that. But if you are if you are struggling with that, then naturally so you're going to look at the commandments of men. In other words, you're going to look at the law and think, okay, well, I'm falling short here. I'm falling short there. I need to get right in this area. When God comes and lives on the inside of you, you are the righteousness of God by faith. That's the bottom line. You don't have to have a, a whole list of do's and don'ts written on your wall to remind you of what not to do or what to do. God write those laws in your heart and you will naturally follow those laws when God is living on the inside of you. Amen. Now, we want to open it up for questions or comments. So if you're on the phone and you have a question or comment, you can uh, press 1 and we'll take your question or your comment. All right. Don't look like we have any questions or comments, so we want to say thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something has been said that has been a blessing to you, and uh, we pray that you will also continue to listen in to this broadcast. Have a blessed day.